Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor, and if you're watching my videos, reading my blog, live as it were, as opposed to watching them or reading them in the future, then you'll know that I'm very much into my chub fishing at the moment. And for me, that's what angling is all about. It's about enjoyment. First and foremost, I target species, I visit venues, depending on how I feel at that time. I don't think to myself, well, I write a blog, I make videos, I need to give all species a, a fair crack of the whip. Basically, you go for what you want to. And at the moment, chub are very much, first and foremost, in my thoughts and at the top of the tree. So, let's give this session a go then and see if I can get one for the camera. Well that was quite interesting, I noticed a kingfisher coming along the canal and there are no overhanging trees which are obvious natural perching stations for kingfishers to uh, occupy as they look into the canal but what this one did, which was improvisation at its best, it actually perched on the edge of the canal on the towpath peering over into the water so I thought that was interesting and I was able to get a, a few brief moments of that albeit at a distance so not quite uh, professional in the way that maybe uh, you know a top cameraman would do this is all very amateur of course and then it decided to lift its tail and squirt so I got the toilet habits of a kingfisher as well captured on film And if you have been following my adventures recently on the canal after Chubb, you'll know that it, it hasn't been easy. I've, st I've struggled to get amongst the fish. I certainly haven't had great numbers each session. I've managed to catch. I've also had blanks as well. So this morning, within 15 minutes, I had a fantastic pull round from the rod. I missed the fish. An hour later, the same thing happened. Another bite of the cherry. And again, well, that time I was striking into, uh, into nothing. Well, I was wondering whether I would actually get amongst a fish. Third time lucky, as they say. The rod pulls round and I'm into one and this time I netted it. It's only a small fish, but I tell you, it's very, very welcome after those previous two that I lost. Anyway, it's in the net, in the water, and I'm gonna show you now on camera. The water temperature this morning at first light was 6.9 Celsius, which actually for this time of the year is excellent. If I can get those sort of temperatures in the middle of March, most years, I feel that I'm, I'm doing quite well. And, and actually 6.9 is the lower end of what it has been. I've even hit nines during the winter so far. It's been so mild with that continual southwesterly wind bringing in relatively warm rain that are obviously has affected the waterways and the great thing about it of course is that we've uh, been able to enjoy a nice winter from a, from a weather perspective as anglers although of course the rivers have been in the fields and in many cases unfishable particularly the river seven which is the one i normally head for but you can't have it always can you i'm just making the most of this mild winter that we're having at the moment just a short morning session, it's now coming to an end and I'm definitely a happy camper, particularly after I lost the two previous fish. Anyway, it's a Saturday and I'm off down the Golden Palace now, the Molyneux. I've got a season ticket in the South Bank and to follow the analogy through of what's happened to me so far in this morning's fishing, even if we get a few missed chances, as long as we can get more in the back of their net than they get in the back of ours, I'll continue to be happy. Well, the wolves won anyway, so uh, that kept me nice and bubbly and I'm back for another session and for a lot of anglers now the weather would certainly bring them back down to earth. Uh, it's very windy, it's wet, it's not particularly warm either. The air temperature has dropped considerably even in the last 24 hours. But I'm a great believer that you have to be in it to win it. I've only got a few hours in this particular session and surprisingly there are no other anglers on the bank at all. I haven't passed one even on the walk down. But 
as long as your bait's in the water, you've got a chance, haven't you? It might only be for a couple of hours or so, and the conditions might not be very pleasant for sitting around, but I've got that bait in the water, and that's what really counts. The storm's passed, although it's fairly chilly now, and we're well into dusk. I'm watching the rod tip down there, ready to pounce as soon as it pulls round from a chub. I fish a lot, but I, I think it's important that all anglers understand that there's a difference between a passion and an obsession. In fact, on my Twitter bio at the moment, one of the things it says about me is that I'm passionate about much and obsessed about nothing. There is a, a fine line, perhaps, in, in many people's minds as to what's a passion and what's an obsession. But I feel it's important that we do really understand which is which. A passion is healthy, an obsession is not. And as far as I'm concerned, although I do get out ever such a lot on the bank and I love my fishing, when I'm not out, I'm not consumed by the desire to be there. If I'm doing some work, if I've got a day of work or a morning of work, an afternoon of work, whatever it might be, I'm, I'm totally fulfilled and happy to be doing that. I'm not sitting there thinking, I can't get, wait to get this out of the way so I can get out on the bank. If I'm with my family, we're doing stuff, I'm totally happy and fulfilled to do that. I'm not thinking, I wish I was fishing. Because once that passion becomes an obsession, if it does, then it consumes us and it actually starts to affect other areas of our life, whether it be our family, our work, our social life, whatever. Fishing, for me anyway, is a, is a massive passion. It's a big part of my life, but it's just part. If my family uh, were ill, for example, if someone in the family was ill and I couldn't go fishing for however long, that wouldn't bother me. My family is far more important than my fishing. And I feel it's important for us to, to grasp that uh, principle that there is a difference between a passion and an obsession. And thinking about passion and obsession, football, which I've already mentioned on this video, that can be the same, can't it? To many people, football can become an obsession where it literally takes over people's lives to the extent where the team loses and the whole weekend's ruined. Well, the team wins are on, and they're on some sort of uh, artificial high almost and, and I know the grip the football can have upon our lives because as well as being a keen angler I'm also a keen football fan as well and I mentioned that I've got a season ticket down the Wolves and again this is the obsession versus passion thing up to the year 2000 I used to travel overseas quite a lot in fact I visited um, 27 I think countries at, at varying um, levels of, of visit. Some I spent a lot of time in over a, a long period of time, others more flying visits. But during the course of a year, I would do a lot of traveling, a lot of air miles. But then in the year 2000, my role changed, so I became more of a mobilizer than a missioner. So I'm still involved overseas and I do a lot of uh, stuff in Africa, but now it's more from here, mobilizing the work that's going on out there. So of course from that time, 2000, I was able to um, take up a season ticket down at Wolves because I knew that I could actually go to the games as opposed to before where I'd been missing for half the, half the season or, or something like that. But while I was overseas, I never thought I wish I was at the Wolves just as much as now. I'm down the Wolves every game and I never think I wish I was overseas. It's a passion. So a passion is about doing what you do at that time and enjoying it and getting the best from it but not letting it take over our lives to the point where whatever else we're doing we wish we were somewhere else and I can't really stress that enough because you hear stories in angling where marriages have been broken up now I don't know how much the the fishing played a role or how much the fishing was responsible for that there are probably other factors as well but from what you pick up Certainly the fact that the guy went fishing um, 200 nights a year or whatever didn't help. Um, you have to be careful that what is a passion, good, doesn't become an obsession, bad. And in all those countries I've visited, I've only fished a tiny handful of them. And that was because the people there knew I was a keen angler, so they set something up for me. Like the time I was in South Africa once, and the people got me fishing on a, on a dam for, um, for 
for bass. That was quite uh, that was quite interesting. I really enjoyed that. Another time I arrived in Romania very late at night and the people there said we've organised for you to go fishing tomorrow on a river and some people are going to come and collect you at 4am. I literally had a couple of hours sleep and I was off on the river Prut fishing with people that didn't speak a word of English but we had that universal language, angling. And that was way back when Ceausescu had just been toppled in Romania. So their fishing gear was very ancient. It was like something from the 1920s here in this country. But we had a great time and I remember catching lots of roach and lots of perch, being amazed that these fish would fall to such heavy gear. The line was thick, the hooks were, were really broad and, and big and stand out. But we caught and we had a great time. But emphasizing this passion versus obsession thing which is perhaps the the theme that I'm, I'm sharing in this particular video blog while I was out there it was great to fish but I was there for something else so I was there for work so while I was doing that I was focused on that the fishing was just a little bit of a, a byproduct a nice one nevertheless but it was just a, a byproduct Session three, and I'm actually into a, a fish that I'm able to produce for the camera. Hopefully, of course, I'm going to net it. It's a chub. Feels uh, not too big, but nice enough. And when you're struggling, any fish is nice enough, isn't it? Wait, there it is. In the net, undercover barbel sticks. Brilliant. Excellent, that fish has now gone back. And here's the bait that I referred to, barbel sticks. You can see there, I've broke it up into a, into a chunk to fit on the, uh, the hair rig. Size four, short hook length of about uh, five inches, six inches. Then a, a system over the swivel there and a free running lead a third of an ounce so a very simple setup but one that's working for me and that's what really counts this video now comes to a conclusion I've got a few more sessions to go so any fish that I catch there as always I'll include them at the end I hope you've enjoyed the video I've certainly enjoyed making it even though it has been a struggle so far if you're out and about yourself tight lines and don't forget keep that passion but don't let it become anything else.